Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, kids of all ages, welcome. Welcome back. Or if you're new, just welcome. I'm hydrating today. Uh, not ready for coffee just yet. This is a test run, but if this goes well. You may see this video. Uh, yes, so by the title of the video, you'll, you'll know that this is my uh, first attempt at a weekly rotation video. Um... I'm gonna do things a little bit different. I have a few a few goodies to to show off that I've gotten in recently, but um, but the bulk of what I'll be doing today is is kind of my re weekly rotation, and um, it's for Sunday through last Monday. So my my weeks aren't the traditional weeks. I don't have weekends, so my weekend is every day. So, um, so yeah, we'll do Monday weekly rotation and it'll be for the last seven days. And, um, and what I've done is, uh, I've, I've started the week off with one fragrance and then I got the idea to kind of pull on that thread and, um, and kind of try to find things in my collection that, that kind of relate, either have the same vibe or the same profile or the same, um, you know, the same characteristics. So I went through and, and you may disagree with this or you may think I'm crazy, but a lot of these have a lot of the similar, a lot of the same vibe running through them. Um, and we'll get to that in a minute. Um, uh, scent of the day. Scent of the day is uh, just a little decant that I got from a friend of mine, Duncan, a famous YouTuber. And this is a release from 1992 called Xenia Pour Homme. Let me tell you, it's an aromatic, aromatic fougere, and I gotta say, I really, really dig this. Um, I'm gonna have to look for a full bottle of this. You know, and it's and it's there's nothing in the note breakdown that would indicate that it's anything phenomenal or or exceptional, but um, and and you know every. Every aromatic fougere has just that something that sets it apart or that, that differentiates it from all the other 80s, 70s, 80s, and 90 fougeres. Um, and this one, this one has like a, man, I don't know how to call it. I've been trying to think of it for the last half hour. And it, and it seems like, it almost seems like it has like a, a faint grape juice vibe. I mean, that sounds crazy, but with all of the herbs and spices and the usual suspects of oak moss and, you know, and anise and, and a few other things in there, there's this overriding slight sweetness of a grape juice vibe. I don't know how else to call it, but man, it's really nice. I'm going to have to look for a full bottle of that. Um, got a couple of, a uh, couple of new fragrances in. Um, I've told you that I've, you know, been hunting down, uh, Aramis's back catalog and, uh, I got another one in recently and this is Aramis's modern leather and this is good, but it didn't knock me out. If I'm honest, um, it's very good, but it's kind of on the subtle side. I was hoping for a little more of a bite from the leather, um, but but still good nonetheless. I've only worn it a couple of times, so I'm going to need to give it some more attention. Um, got a couple more on my on my current go after list, and uh, special blend I think is is the next one on my hit list. And um, what else? Uh, there's a couple of I, I still need 900 in JHL. So those you know one of these days. Um, okay, uh, the next one that I got. Oh. I I got together with a friend and he was selling minis. So he told me to take a look and see which ones I liked. I took them all. <laughs> I went and just bought every mini that he had and there's just like good 30 or 40 minis in here. Um, I think I'll probably make this uh, a separate video unto itself. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it's, minis are a great way to sample stuff, you know. Um, and especially older stuff that's that's hard to find, hard to get, and I don't know, I don't know a whole ton of people that kind of have the the variety of collection to 
to decant from that I could ask for a sample. So um, those minis are a great way. Well, anyway, buying those minis, he, he showed me a couple of bottles that he was getting rid of. And the one that kind of caught my eye and I thought was interesting was this one. Um, the box is a little bit box is a little bit janky but this one is called atmosphere has anybody heard of this um i i'd never heard of it but i looked up the note breakdown and i was like hmm that's pretty interesting here's the bottle atmosphere um cap's a little janky or whatever but this is this is really growing on me it's very interesting from the note breakdown and the more i wear it the more i'm i'm starting to dig it um, I wanted to read the note breakdown just because I want to see if anybody else thinks this is as interesting as I do. Um, this was this was released in 2012. There's no there's no perfumer that I can see. Um, but here are the note here are the notes: um, raspberry, plum, blackberry, black currant, bergamot, and citruses. Um, rose, jasmine, geranium, lavender, chili pepper. Uh, cloves, resins, anise, vetiver, and cardamom, uh, vanilla, patchouli, cashmere, musk, sandalwood, amber, tonka bean, incense, oak moss, woody notes, whatever the hell that means, and cedar and labdanum. That's an interesting note breakdown, is it not? Um, now, I was expecting something fruity and and heavy, you know, something on the, the, the denser side, but that's not what this is. And maybe the name is, is a hint atmosphere. Um, this is kind of aromatic. This is, uh, kind of, uh, I don't know how to call it. It's, um, I don't want, it's not thin. It's not thin in any way, but it's, um, it's not dense. It's got, it's got this airiness about it, and uh, those fruits come into play right off the top, and those are some of my favorite fruits in a in in a fragrance: plum and blackberry and black currant. Um, and then those those heavier notes come in, but they come in in an aromatic way, and that is an interesting little fragrance. And I'm glad I I'm glad I picked up uh, picked that up. It's just a partial and. I'd never heard of it. And he was like, what do you think about this? And I was like, I've never heard of it. I think I'll take a shot. Um, okay, one more. One more that um, I, I kind of got in a trade from my, my friend, the famous YouTuber. Um, he sent me a decant of this a long time ago. And it's always stuck in the back of my mind because I really enjoyed it. Um, it's kind of unique. Um, the... The note breakdown doesn't indicate that it's anything spectacular, but it's just the way that it, it does it. It's, um, it's really kind of nice. This is a 1976 release, and this is Coca for Men. Has anybody ever heard of this? I've only ever seen the uh, aftershave of this. I've never seen uh, the eau de toilette, and him and I got to talking, and he wanted something I have, and I was like, well, he put this up. He was like, I'll send it to you. I was like... Yes, I took him up on his offer. And um, this is, uh, I don't know how to call it. It's in the, um, it's in the Dolly, it's in the Salvador Dolly range. Um, maybe, maybe in the um, small toe, um, I don't know. It's 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 a darker. The anise is it's kind of seems like this this center point of this fragrance, and it's um, it's got a little bit of a dark resinous feel, and uh, it's it's really unique. It's I've never smelled anything like it. Um, really very good. So I'll have to wear that more and get more familiar with it. Um, okay, so that's out of the way. I got no coffee today. I feel feel kind of naked without my coffee. Um, all right, so like I said, I started the week off um, last Monday, and uh, and then I just started pulling this this thread throughout my collection to see, you know, things that I thought were kind of relative to this first one that I picked. The first one that I picked uh, for Monday was Gucci Rush for men. 
Now, I hadn't visited this in a long time since I got it, because when I got it, I have to be honest, I was disappointed. I was like, I, I, luckily, I didn't pay unicorn prices for this. I got this for like 50 or 60 bucks. Um, and even at that price, I was a little disappointed. I was like, what is this? Just bland, blah, like, you know, whatever. Um and I let it sit for a while and then I picked it up one day and I was just like, let me take this for a spin. And I wore it last week and then I wore it again this past week. Um, and uh, this has really turned out to be a nice little surprise. Now, is it worth the big unicorn prices? No, absolutely not. Um, but it's got this, um, it's got this uh, kind of contrast. It's, um, this was released in 2000. Um, Antoine Maison Du and uh, Daniela Andrea Andrea. Well, anyway, it's got this creamy combo of sandalwood, cedar, musk, and vanilla and, and lavender. And um, it's really kind of like a summer vacation kind of a fragrance, but it has this contrast of uh, like a s slightly smoky incense, cypress. Um, kind of uh, uh, base to it that kind of trickles up through the fragrance. So when you're wearing it, you, you get these wafts of smoke through it that I think are really very interesting. Um, so yeah, Gucci Rush. So I wore that and I was like, I've got things in my collection that, that kind of remind me of that. And this next one um, does just that. It reminds me of, of Gucci Rush, not one-to-one -one or anything, but it, it, it it kind of does that same thing where it has that contrast. Um, this is Givenchy Play Intense. Now I just got this recently, and I've only, I've only really tested it a few times. I wore it once, obviously last last Tuesday, um, two thousand and nine. Uh, I don't know who the perfumer. I want to say Lu. I want to say Louis Suizak is the perfumer, but anyway. It does this um, this creamy powdery thing uh, in the in the top in the mid, and then there's with tonka bean and sandalwood and vanilla kind of, and then it has this darker um, coffee note that kind of that kind of wafts through it, and that contrast of the creamy powdery and the coffee note um, make a nice little combo. Um, it doesn't last very long though. Um, and I also got this at a decent price. So my recommendation is don't pay big money for that one. Um, and it's, you know, it's kind of a, I don't want to say, it's, I don't want to say juvenile fragrance, but it is kind of a playful, you know, whatever fragrance. Um, like I said, I wouldn't spend big money on it. Um, from that to this, um, I got this a long time ago and I really like it. Um, I wear it to the gym sometimes. Um, so this is Bulgari Black. 1998 release. Anique Minardo, if I'm not mistaken. And this does roughly the same thing. Uh, not one, like, a, like I said, these aren't one-to-one -to, -one to each other, but they kind of have the same duality about them. Um, this one has a powdery tonka bean... Um, you know, like this, this creamy sandalwood lavender, um, and then it has the contra and there's a little bit of that rubbery vibe in the top. Um, it, it dissipates pretty quickly, but then there's this smoky black tea, soft leather thing that kind of contrasts it from in the mid and kind of kind of wafts back and forth between that that soft creamy tonka bean and this smoky black tea soft leather thing um this is really nice um unless you apply it like heavy it doesn't last long it sits kind of close to the skin but i dig it it's a good fragrance um i wouldn't pay big money for that but i'd pay more for it than than the first two that's for sure um, this one I got a few years back and I paid a couple dollars for it. Um, but I think it was worth it. Uh, it's worth it on a lot of different levels. It's, you know, it's just one of those unicorns. Um, 
and it's a great bottle it's, it's a great fragrance and this is midnight paris and of all of these together um midnight in paris and see the bottle how great the detail is on this bottle i i really dig this this is the edt by the way um of of all the fragrances this was released in 2010 if i'm not mistaken and olivier polge i, I want to say olivier polge i could be wrong but um uh, of all the fragrances that uh that i'm showing the two i think that are the closest are the bulgari black and and the midnight in paris midnight in paris has that powdery creamy tonka bean benzoin uh almondy kind of a thing but then it has this um this holly and and black tea kind of a vibe with like a little bit of a soft leathery incense coming from the base and and that contrast is it's just so nice it's really it's like a sexy date night fragrance um i really like this i of all these i would consider replacing this one if i ran out um and maybe the next maybe the next one but i have a backup of the next one so that won't be necessary okay so i guess where are we at friday friday uh this one has really become a favorite of mine I, i'm a big fan of this house but this one is uh it's really good it's it's a, a little like a lot of these a little on the simple side but just good you know just really good this is Guerlain's louis this was released in 2017 if i'm not mistaken and terry wasser of course um now uh, i don't know if delphine jelk worked on this but we'll mention her um now this one is this one has pear benzoin and um carnation so it's like kind of a creamy spicy um creamy spicy thing uh with like a soft fruitiness but um but in the base there's this this subtle smoky leather that kind of rises up and uh creates a nice contrast this is a good fragrance i have a backup of this um i heard they were discontinuing it i don't know if it was last year or the year before so i went out you know i got another one um okay now this one may be the most different of of all of these uh i think but it still does that same you know contrasting idea um this is again by by terry vosser this is jill jill sander man absolute and um i really like this fragrance the it's got a it's got violet lavender and and wormwood that that create this creamy powdery kind of a vibe almost like dracar uh similar to Jakar's opening um but this one is a little lemony which is a little different than a lot of these this has a little bit of a prominent lemony vibe up top but uh in, in the base there's uh a leather and i don't know how much oud but leather and woods in the base that kind of contrast that creaminess of the violet and lavender and, and wormwood um this is good uh I haven't run into too many Jill Sanders that I that I don't like. Um, I'm a big fan of that house. Um, you know, this one is. So I just keep this one close by in case I get the urge to spray on an awesome fragrance. Jill Sanders feeling man. Um, okay, last but certainly not least, I wore this yesterday, and um, this is a this is a favorite of my my friend, the famous YouTuber Duncan, and. Uh, this is a Dominic Ropion fragrance released in 99. And this is Casual Friday by Escada. This is a great fragrance. This is a really great fragrance. It's classy. It's uh, vanilla, ambery, lavender. Um, there's a spicy carnation in there. And then the contrast, in my opinion, in the contrast comes with this anise patchouli kind of a vibe at, at the base. Um, 
which contrasts that that creamy, slightly powdery vanilla amber. Um, this is a good fragrance. This is a really good fragrance. I have a backup of this. Um, I wear this a lot, actually, of, of all my fragrance. I don't know. Can't really see through the bottle, but I put a solid dent in that bottle. I put a really solid dent in that bottle. Um, you know, and I, I got the backup thinking that the price is only going to go up. Maybe I could use it as a, a bartering chip down the road, but I could see wanting to break into that backup if I ever ran through that bottle. Um, okay, so that's everything. Um, I think what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start uh, doing my weekly rotations. I'll do them on Monday for the week prior. And for a while, at least until I you know, think of something else. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to, I'm going to start the week off with one fragrance and then I'm going to pull the, pull on that thread throughout the week and, and find things that are in my collection that I, that I, that I feel are related or have similar vibes or, you know, do, do kind of the same thing. And, uh, I haven't decided yet. I thought about maybe leathers or, um, uh, vanillas. Uh, I haven't decided yet. I'm I'm gonna put something on tonight, and I was thinking about putting this on, and then, and then running with a leather theme for the week. This is called uh, Saddle or Sedel by Sven Svensk Parfums, and this is a really curious fragrance. This is when you first smell it. It's a saddle leather. It's a boozy saddle leather um very dry not sweet very dry um and it's almost got like a whiskey vibe to it um but when you look at the note breakdown you'll notice that it has uh gourmand uh notes in it butterscotch and i think caramel and vanilla um and once you find out it's got those gourmand notes in it then it kind of switches your brain and gets you away from it being a pure leather and you kind of perceive it as a as a bit of a gourmand leather it's a very strange very strange fragrance but i think i might i think i might wear this tonight and then throughout the week pull on uh pull on the, the leather thread for the week and then uh so i'll be back next monday and let you know how it goes um as as always, I appreciate all the love. I appreciate all the comments. If there's anything you can teach me about anything I've shown here, I'm always open for suggestions of new directions to look in or, or uh, more information about what what I'm sampling or stuff that I like or, you know, um, put it in the comments. I, I really appreciate the, the interaction. So y'all have a great night. Stay grateful. Peace.